Welcome to our series, looking at the hidden secrets of the Winter Gardens in Blackpool. In this video, we will be looking at the rumours and theories surrounding the Holy Grail of Blackpool, and that is the tunnels that are rumoured to exist at the Winter Gardens. So join me for a look at all the evidence that exists, and hopefully we can put to bed the rumours on whether they exist or not. Now just before we begin, you may have noticed that this video is a re-upload of the original. This was to remove some footage that may have been deemed a security risk to the Winter Gardens, and not for any other reason. I can honestly say that the footage was nothing conclusive anyway, so don't be thinking that they are trying to hide something sinister. This was not the case. So I'm stood at the intersection of Victoria Street and Bank Hay Street two prominent names related to the Winter Gardens and as you can see behind me we've got Blackpool Tower. Now there are rumours flying around as a lot of you will be aware that a tunnel used to exist apparently that ran from Blackpool Tower and up to the Winter Gardens complex right at the top there. I'm now going to dissect the various rumours around the different tunnels. So let's start with a map showing where these tunnels are rumoured to go and we will look at each one individually. Tunnel number one. The first one is an apparent tunnel that linked the Winter Gardens to Rakes Hall, which was then a large tourist attraction that predates the tower and the Winter Gardens. Now, as you can see from this map, Rakes Hall is quite a distance from the Winter Gardens. So straight away, it seems unlikely. It's over 2000 feet in distance. It's also worth noting that Rakes Hall closed as an attraction just 20 or so years after the Winter Gardens opened. And it was, at the time, direct competition, with the former blaming the Winter Gardens for its eventual demise, offering a similar product closer to the station and the tourists. So to me, it seems a no-brainer that this wasn't even a thing. Why would they link them with a tunnel? There would be no benefit in doing so and the distance alone makes it seem costly and pointless. If you have any other theories relating to this, please let me know in the comments below. Tunnel 2, our second tunnel within the area, was an apparent tunnel linking the Blackpool Tower to the Palace Theatre that used to stand on the opposite side of Victoria Street. Let's get a closer look and I'll explain more. Now one thing we do know is opposite here used to be the Palace Theatre. So this building is a modern building, but right there was the original Palace Theatre. And I'll put a picture in of that now. But we do know for sure that the Blackpool Tower Company who owned the Palace Theatre had a tunnel underneath from down in the basement levels that linked the two buildings there. So performers could head from one building to the other without trekking through the streets. So somewhere underneath here would have been an old tunnel linking the two. Whether it's still there, we don't know. I am told that part of it still exists out into the street somewhere here, underneath in the basement levels, and it's now used for storage. But on this side, because the building has been replaced, it's all filled in now. I just want to talk about what is under the Winter Gardens currently. Now the only cellars or the tunnels under Winter Gardens that we're aware of is one that's located underneath the Blackpool Opera House. Now today, that tunnel is sealed up. The Opera House tunnels were built for ventilation, heating and carrying service ducts around the theatre. These are the tunnels that most people confuse with other tunnels, leaving the Winter Gardens boundary. They also filmed an episode of Most Haunted Live down here back in 2004. He's a bad one. He's a bad one. Who is a bad one? There's a horrible atmosphere down here. Uh... Now the big rumour that we're going to look at today is that a tunnel linked from this side at Blackpool Tower, again, down at the basement level and all the way up to the Winter Gardens. Now the first thing I want to show you is there are quite a few theories as to where that tunnel would have ran if it existed. So first, let's start by looking at the various theories of the tunnels 
and then we'll look into the evidence to work out whether it's possible or not. Route 1 would have seen a tunnel running in a direct line from the tower to the Winter Gardens. But worth mentioning that the Blackpool Tower Company also owned a warehouse right in the middle of the two. We will get to that in a minute. Route number two would have seen a similar route, but running up the now defunct Sefton Street. Here's a picture of Sefton Street before the Hounsell Shopping Centre was built over it. It would have been easier to dig under a road, and it would still pass close enough to the warehouse for access. Route number three, a tunnel running directly up Victoria Street. Again, easier to construct under a street, and it could be linked directly to the existing tunnel between the tower and the Palace Theatre. It would have needed a second spur tunnel to link it to the warehouse from this route. Now after looking into all of these routes in great detail, the most likely to me would be route number three, running up Victoria Street. And shortly I'm going to present you with some bits of evidence that made me come to this conclusion. But before we do, let's look at some of the eyewitness stories of these tunnels and see if they add up or make sense. These accounts are taken from various sources. I'll link to them in the description below. Our first account says, The entrance was below the pub inside the Winter Garden's main arcade. We also came up in a warehouse and you could look out of the windows and see the Winter Gardens. It came out from Victoria Street and into the stalls of the circus. This sounds like route number three. Even mentioning the warehouse and it would back up my theory of roughly where it comes out within the Winter Gardens. An account from Harry Luby. Harry was an apprentice carpet fitter at the Winter Gardens. In 1959, I used two tunnels. I moved goods on a battery-powered three-wheeler. There was a tunnel from the tower to the warehouse, and another from the warehouse to Winter Gardens. There is a bricked-up tunnel in the main cellar of Winter Gardens, accessed down a ramp and near the staff entrance. Again, this is similar to route number three. The staff entrance is also very close to my door theory in the Winter Gardens. An account from Robin Wilson. From 1965 to 1968, I worked at a gifts fair in the Winter Gardens. Before the national grid, large buildings used to generate their own electricity. When the tower company purchased the Winter Gardens, it makes sense that they might share a single power supply and connect via ducting between them. The tunnel had an arched roof and was roughly six feet by six feet. It started in the switch room at the Olympia building, but it was eventually sealed for security reasons. Again, this would make sense with regards to them using it for power cables. This actually backs up my own theory on their usage today. My only issue with this theory is that the Olympia is at street level and so is the switch room, but it is very close to the Victoria Street entrance and could have had adequate room to slope down under the street from this location. Many of the former employees of the Winter Gardens and the Blackpool Tower also seem to support the Victoria Street theory, or route number three. Many accounts from employees of past, its first leisure days and its present they all seem to state it started in the basement levels of the Victoria Street entrance and headed down Victoria Street towards the existing Tower to the Palace Theatre tunnel and came out in a joiner's workshop under the tower with a spur into the Tower Company warehouse. It's worth now talking about the Tower Company warehouse on Tower Street. This was a large warehouse looking building built around the same time the Blackpool Tower Company bought the Winter Gardens and around the same time they built the Olympia building across the street. You can see from this image taken in 1920 that when the Great Wheel was present, the Tower Warehouse wasn't. It was mainly used for storage and administration for both Winter Gardens and the Tower as well as the Palace Theatre. They possibly built any tunnels at the same time linking all four properties together. It would also have made sense 
that they used a single source of power for all their properties, since they built an enlarged power generator room in the Olympia. The tower warehouse building was demolished in 2010 and is now a hive of construction activity once again. They are building a new extension to the Hounds Hill shopping centre and it would have been a perfect opportunity to look for any tunnel evidence. Wait, hang on, what is that? We'll come back to this shortly. There are, however, a number of local historians and managers of said buildings that claim the tunnel theory is utter nonsense. And this, at first, was my position on this. However, the more I've looked into this, the more I have debunked the counter-arguments or their corporate intentions. I mean, I'm not looking to knock someone else's opinion, but if it was in their interest to say it didn't exist, say, for security reasons, then they will tow the company or council line. But let's look at some of the other theories against the tunnels and try and debunk them. Number one, we have never seen any evidence inside the tunnels. This is true, but we probably wouldn't have. They were just dark, dingy work tunnels, nothing worth picturing, and have probably been gone for many, many years now. Number two, the Winter Gardens is uphill from the Blackpool Tower, and any tunnel would end up 30 to 40 feet underground. This is not true. A tunnel can have a gentle slope across this distance, as we've seen with many railway tunnels. It could also follow the natural slope, say, under a street. But let's check those elevations out. So I'm currently stood outside the Victoria Street entrance of Winter Gardens. And one of the theories, like I said, was the height difference between the tower and here. So if there was a tunnel, it would have been from somewhere down here and down towards the tower. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't see much of a height difference. In fact, I'm going to tell you exactly what the height difference is in a second. But as you can see, across the distance that it travels, it's not much of a slope at all. In fact, if you look down here, the street slopes back down again. So just down there, you'll probably be at the same height as the tower building is down there. The elevation difference from the top of Victoria Street to the bottom near the tower is only 14 feet difference across its 635 feet length. From Adelaide Street at the Olympia to Adelaide Street at the tower is only a 5 foot difference across its 663 feet length. And directly from the Olympia under the Tower Company building and to the Blackpool Tower is only a nine foot difference in elevation. So as you can see, a lot less of a slope than it seems. Number three, it would have to break through people's basements on the way. Again, it depends on which route we're referring to. If it went down Victoria Street or route number three, then it wouldn't. The current national grid lines run down there in a conduit tunnel directly from the Victoria Street entrance of the Winter Gardens towards the tower. Wait, what? I'll come back to that in a minute. The Sefton Street route, or route number two, again, wouldn't have. It was a direct understreet access to the tower. No buildings or shopping centres on there back then. Only route number one, directly in a straight line, would have had any premises in between. But that's the least likely route anyway. Number four. They were in direct competition with each other, so why would they have tunnels between them? Well, as we've already established, the Blackpool Tower Company owned the Winter Gardens from the 1920s, and they also had their administration warehouse right in the middle. Nobody said the tunnels would have been there from the Victorian period. There's no time scale on these claims, only that they may have existed at some point. Number five, constant roadworks and new buildings would have revealed any of this if they existed. Well, the Hounds Hill could have obliterated any of the route in the middle when it was built. We know that for sure, as they dug down two storeys. So this may be true for route numbers one and two, but not for route number three. Any repaving or construction works on Victoria Street would have uncovered something obvious for route number three, unless it's been used for present day utilities. Hmm. By the way, I have the utility plans to hand, 
and it does show exactly that. But I'm not putting them on here for security reasons, and I don't think I'm allowed. Could also be why nobody else mentions it. Not to mention that the tunnels could be a decent depth down, if coming from the Winter Garden's basement levels to the tower basements. So no need to disturb anything with ground level works or roadworks. If only there was some kind of construction work happening outside the Winter Gardens that could show the theory of Route Number 3 coming into the old tower warehouse from Victoria Street. Oh wait, well after looking at the construction pictures of them starting the works for the new Hounsill development, yes, I went back and I checked them all. What do we see behind them all, smiling for the camera? Yes, a brick lined arch a few feet under the ground. Heading from Victoria Street towards the now defunct tower warehouse site. I wrote this off as possibly basement levels for an old building. But there were never any buildings at this point. It was in fact running under the old Sefton Street location. I went back and filmed the construction works. And as you can see now, they've concreted it in. I asked one of the construction workers about the brick arch heading towards Victoria Street. And he confirmed that they were aware of it and they had shored it up with concrete so they can build on top of it. An acknowledgement right there. Do the tunnels exist today? I would say that I'm 99% sure that they don't any longer. Far too many obstructions built on top of any proposed routes, and they no longer generate their own power or need a connection to any other building in this way. Not to mention that the tower warehouse is now long since demolished. They were probably disposed of and filled in during the 60s or maybe even the 70s, but there could be sections of it still in use, like the section under Victoria Street to carry the modern utilities. And no doubt that there could still be parts of the tunnel entrances in either building. Did they exist? My theory though is that they more than likely did exist at one point. Again, I can't say for sure, I am leaning towards the Victoria Street theory, or route number three, along with many, many other people. So Darren, you explored the lower levels of the Winter Gardens. Did you find any signs of a tunnel entrance? Well, there were quite a few doorways, sealed off and pointing towards the Victoria Street entrance, but nothing conclusive or that could prove either way. I did receive this image from an anonymous source whilst making this video, and it was simply titled, I think this is what you're looking for, and dated 1960. This certainly appears to add up, with the utilities running down the wall, a brick arched roof, and a gentle slope from the end downwards. Could this be the only existing photo we know about of the infamous tower tunnel? Only the person who sent it knows for sure. I hope you enjoyed this investigation style video. I wanted to lay down as much evidence as I could and let you decide for yourselves. I hope it helped you come to a conclusion. I know it did for me. If you want to let me know what you thought of my theories or have anything further to add, please do let me know in the comments below. And who knows, I may make a part two if there's anything substantial and maybe look at similar stories of tunnels in other places in the future. This concludes my Hidden Secrets of Winter Gardens series for now, and I hope you all enjoyed all nine videos as much as I loved making them. I wanted to show you everything in this wonderful building, and didn't want to leave anything out. Thank you for lasting this long in the video, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Thanks for watching.